What's up, Alex? <laughs> All right. So back again. Another episode. We are. I'm excited to hear what you brought tonight. Oh, I brought something great. <laughs> I so doubt no, it. Is. <laughs> I know what I brought, and it's great. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see where this, this all shakes out at the end. Um, so, there's an oldie but a goodie that I brought. It's made a little bit of a resurgence in our game group, and it is a game I quite love. It's called Orleans. Orleans, if you're... Uh, Orleans. <laughs> if you're Southern. Um <laughs> Such a good game. It is. It is. It's a lot of fun. It 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 doesn't reinvent the wheel. Um, it's it's a basic bag puller. So if you've played like Quacks Quidlinburg, everybody gets a little bag like this, and it's got a bunch of uh, these chips in it. I actually did the uh, the upgraded chips, I was so my version is a little bit nicer. But yeah, they've got these one. big like chunky chips in in there. So you know these things are nice when you're tossing around. They they clack a little bit. <laughs> Uh, they're not they're not like uh, like the little cardboard tokens that come in it, but um, in Orleans, what you're doing is you have uh, you have all these little different worker chips that are in here. There's your farmer, here's your uh, craftsman, and you've got a, a little tableau in front of you. And what everybody does, they pull these these chips out, and they're going to place them on their little board, and then they're going to get more chips for their bag. They're going to get cool abilities like monks. Monks are wild. I mean, if they you, can and, get wild. If you we remember for our Biblios review, monks can get crazy. <laughs> crazy. That West Mail was tasty. Uh, and one of one of the cool things that you can do as well is there's these little uh, extra spaces that you can buy if you purchase the I believe he's the merchant. Um, you can get additional spaces to place your dudes in. So I do not do that enough. No. I feel like it's a key to helping you to build your engine better. It, it can be. It can really make everything synergize together. So what you're trying to do is move up these tracks and get victory points and the scoring at the end everything is kind of translates to victory points. So you'll get scores in this that are 150 to 130 and they're 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 all over the map. Uh, in addition to the tracks, there's also this little map on one side where you're moving a trader around and he's building guild halls or trading posts. I forget what they're called. Um, and so there, there's this little map that people are racing to get their guild halls out at. And th there's, there's, um, you know, we've got that going. We've got tracks on the bottom. And there's also these little guys. I, I don't think I have any that I can reach quickly. But there's these little dudes, um, and if you hit... So unprepared. If you hit a point first, <laughs> you get one of these little guys. And one of these little guys is worth crazy victory points at the end of the game. So every, <coughs> everybody's racing to get everything all at once. And it just turns into like a something where you come in with a strategy, but maybe your chip pulls are not what they should be. Or maybe somebody beats you to something, and all of a sudden you've got to pivot mid-game. And it's just... It's exciting, but it's not... Super bad stress. Like to me, it's such a relaxing game. It's it's super calming. It's fun. It can be done in like ninety minutes. You can teach it like that. It's it, it's a good one. I talk about palate cleansing games a lot, and usually I mean something that's like thirty minutes or mm -hmm. less. But I I would say this feels like a palate cleansing game for me in that the high stress of playing a blood rage. Oh yeah. This there's a lot less of that, and there's even a little cooperative board that I like. Right. Yeah. Where you can. Everybody places, and, and once you fill up, like, you have to, like, donate your guys to the board, to the cause, right? But once you, like, get enough, you get the perks of it. Like, you can yep. get the perks when you put them up there and stuff. So I kind of like the cooperative element of that a little bit. Yep. Even though you're definitely putting out guild halls and blocking other people. Absolutely. And my bag's the best, right? <laughs> You think so? Uh, the other thing that's pretty neat. So you you play this over eighteen rounds, and it sounds like a lot, but for the most part, everybody can go simultaneously. So you're not kind of waiting. Like, what are you doing? Okay, is it my turn? Is it your turn? Whose turn is it? But the other thing that keeps it interesting is there's these event uh, tiles that are going to get flipped over, yep. and they kind of change everything each round. So that does keep it a little interesting as well. Um, so we've talked about it. We all like this game. Uh, it's going to be a great one for game night. But what would you drink with this? I mean, or Orleans in France. Like, where where should we go? I feel like I just need a piece of toast with some butter. And just... Zip. Oh, oh, like a baguette. Like the big... Like uh... the baguette. <laughs> we, we could go there. Um, you know... Baguette whiskey? 
Uh, a cognac, like like a really bready one. I don't, I don't know. A so I, I, I thought I thought a couple different ways on this. Mm. So hear me out. I, I started off. I'm like, let me get a nice French wine, but that's not my speed. Mm. Uh, I don't know any French beers. So mm. then I started thinking, maybe, maybe I'll get a cognac, but that had sit on my shelf way too long. I didn't want to buy a cognac just for this. If you have one, it probably pair awesome with this. Let us know which one you prefer. I'd love to know. Definitely. I'm always down for trying something new. But here's what I did. Since we're whiskey guys. Yeah? Tell me more. And since Orléans is a game that takes place in France, I decided to go with the Lucky Seven Frenchman. Wow. <laughs> You're going to have to unpack that one for me. What in the world are you talking about? Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this. So Lucky Seven is a brand that was started by some college buddies. Uh, Even the cork. The cork's pretty high Look end. Look at this. So, it has this pattern on it. That's impressive. Yeah, and, and so what these college buddies did is, is they love movies, they love the cinema, um, and they love bourbon. So they decided to try to incorporate like the movie. See, it's like a little movie ticket on the label. Oh, yeah. And this is named after Stage 7, which in Hollywood is some... They win a ton of awards for any production on there. So this is the Lucky 7, named after Stage 7. I want to try it. So it's a Frenchman. It's called the Frenchman because it is bourbon, sourced bourbon. We, I believe it to be Barton. I've seen some stuff online which confirms my suspicion, but they haven't come directly out and said it. Um, but... I need a glass. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sharing's caring, Dan. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this is Barton. Um, most of what most of what Lucky Seven does has an age statement. This, uh, the Frenchman specifically, is a Nas, non-age stated whiskey. A Nas. But what makes it French? So with bourbon, you're typically aging the barrel in American oak casks. With the Frenchman, it is aged in American oak casks, and then it is finished in French oak casks. What is the difference, you say? <laughs> what is the difference, Dan? <laughs> I've been wondering this my whole life. <laughs> so they'll they'll age uh, they'll age Lucky Seven in American oak casks, and then they'll dump it out. They'll finish it in a new charred French oak Ooh. cask. French, yeah, it's 113 proof. You'll feel that. <laughs> uh, I was not ready. No. The French oak casks, so French oak is a much tighter grained wood. Um, you have to hand saw it, so it's a little bit more expensive. It's very common in wine, so it gives a silkier um, feel to the bourbon. Like, look at that. Look at those waves and ripples in there. Yours is super dark. Yeah, I mean, that, that bottle is dark. You're getting that second barreling on there. And if if you know anything about bourbon, a, a lot of times they say 70% of a bourbon's taste can come from the barrel. Mm. So think, this has been aging in a new American oak cask, and then it's put in a new barrel. So think of all the flavors that are coming from the barrel on this. This, this is supposed to be super oaky. I, I just opened this tonight. So I am learning. Where'd it go? <laughs> I'm learning about it with you. <laughs> Well, I had my acclimation sip, as they call it, right? To acclimate your palate and get ready for what it's about to receive. Uh, then you start drinking, and oh, I get a lot of oak on that, for sure. That is super oaky. It's, mm. it, it's like oaky, mm. tobacco, um, like some chocolate. A little chocolate. Yeah. I mean, this, 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 this to me... It tastes and smells almost like if you open a cigar, like humidor, like the box, and you get like the smell of that wood and cigars have been sitting in there. That's like what this is. This is this is great. This is what I like about bourbon. It's got a lot of complexity to it, but the heat level does burn off a little bit of it for me. It's not yep. as... I mean, well, you think about so much of what I particularly like and I drink, it mm -hmm. is finished in things that are probably not as much like the French oak. They're mm -hmm. more the sweeter, right? You yep. know, the ports, the sherry casks, all of those things that round out the flavor so mm -hmm. that, you know, you get... Anyway. <laughs> Understood. Ooh. Totally fine. A different spicy. strokes for different folks. A little spice. Uh, you, can, you guys can get the Lucky 7, I think, for, from their website. I think it's about 100 bucks a bottle. They also, if you see them around, there's one called the Proprietor. It's a single barrel. It's 14 years old. Mm. Thing is amazing. But 
it's 130 proof. So, I mean, it's, Whoa. it's, it's, you're going to know it's there. Wow. Uh, but yeah, th this is very, very, very happy with this purchase. Um, really enjoy this bourbon. I think it's going to pair excellent with Orléans. Orléans. Yeah. And I think the more you drink, the better you can say that word. <laughs> Adios. Yeah. <well. laughs> Curators of fine spirits. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for bringing this. No problem. And I'm excited to play Orléans and have some more of this later. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. However, I brought something as well. Okay. And I'm so excited. Okay. I'm usually excited for what you bring as well. Because uh, I'll give this back to you. Put this on your side. Okay. Take it away. Is it French, man? Is it French? Oh, my gosh. Stop banging on the table. Stop banging the table. So, you brought a game that is a game favorite. I brought a game that I've played at least a dozen times in probably the last four months, which is unbelievable. Okay. Do you know what it is? I'm guessing it's probably a card game. Oh. Or... <laughs> what? Space Base. Okay. Oh. Okay. I am a big fan of Space Base. I like mathy games. Um, and, Super popular with our group. And it is, this is great. Engine Builder. It's lovely. It's by John DeClaire. Oh, you could almost say that like he's French. John Declare. I do declare. Uh, anyways, um, so John Declare, known for Cubitos, Dead Reckoning, yep. Mystic Veil back in the day. So exciting. Uh, produced by Alderac Games. Um, what are they good for? Cascadia recently? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, But this game is so much fun. You know me, and I love my dice. So the whole thing is that this game is played. Everybody can play at the same time. Yep. I mean, there's so much to do. So one person is in charge of the rolling on their turn, but everybody else can do something with that roll potentially. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're all on a galactic federation, you know, trade ship that you've got, and you're having all these ships that come into your port. You've got this amazing giant little layout. personal oh. board. Oh, I'm banging. So it goes from 2 to 12, which makes sense because guess what? <laughs> the die rolls are 2 to 12. And you start out with basic ships, right, that are on each of these. And as you um, roll, you can spend some of your hard-earned gold to upgrade, send other ships away, get new ships coming in. That did not work. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. <laughs> and so what happens is when you have, say, another ship down here, this, I'm fudging it now, but... What's exciting and happens here is if somebody else rolls and they roll that number, you get this benefit now. So it's like you start building this engine and say you start having a bunch of things up here. You start getting all these wicked benefits every time somebody rolls your number. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of you know, chance in this game, but there's also a lot of strategy. And I know some people are down on it. Some people say, I have a simple strategy. I just get numbers one to six and I make the game so easy. But, you know, I think if you're an expert player at this, you can see who's going for what kind of a strategy and you can totally stop that. You can stomp on it pretty quick. So yeah, you, you can hate draft a little bit. Yep. Um, you, you know, and, and I, I think that the cards... <laughs> I think that the cards are very well spaced out. So there's three different levels of cards. So you've got your level one cards, your level two cards, your level three cards. Your level three cards obviously cost more, but they do cooler stuff. There's a chart in there which shows you kind of what hits at what point. And those, those numbers that are more likely to hit, um, those cost more. And those benefits might not be as good. For example, if you're loading up on twos or threes because you know people are going to roll out of twos and threes... Those abilities aren't going to be as cool as maybe the 10, which isn't going to come up as much. But if you stack up on that 10 and one person rolls a 10, you might be able to score 10 victory points in, in, in one roll. And what do we play to? 40 or 50 or something like 40. that? 40. Yeah, so, yeah that's it. Once somebody hits 40, it's over. So there, there's a lot of really cool stuff. There's even that cool instant win card. Instant win. <laughs> so it's like 12, and I think you have to hit it like three to five times, depending on yeah. your player count. But it's there difficult. are cards also that you can get that push things other places so mm -hmm. what i mean by that is like say i had to roll a 10 on my turn and i happen to roll it it'll say like you can activate either the nine card as well or the 11 card and then i could have a card on the 11 that says "Ooh, if you go here you can activate the 10 card again or the 12 card yep. so by rolling like a nine a 10 whatever you can boop, 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 push straight over so you know you're constantly getting those bigger cards getting you know the win so 
I like this game. There's a lot of different ways to win, and I try a different way every time. Yep. And there's also, sometimes you just draft the best card that you can in the moment. Sure. And, you know, one of the things that I love most about this game is, like, it almost has, like, a casino feel. Mm. Like, you know, the other person picks up the dice, and they start rolling them, and you're like, come on, three, come on, yeah. three. You know, and, and sometimes there's stand-up rolls, and, and people yelling and cheering, and people pounding the table, and it's it's fun. Pounds it a lot. Usually. <laughs> but in in a lot of games, I, I get irked or perturbed. It's it's my own, you know, fault. I, I have to work on it, my patience. But I, I can't stand the analysis paralysis sometimes. And mm-hmm. so I'm the one who's twitching like, just take a turn. So <laughs> with me, I love this because I always am caught up in what that other person's doing. Exactly. There's not that downtime. Mm-hmm. You're involved in other people's turns. And that's great. Exactly. So... What do you pair this with? It's a space game. You know, I've done Elysian Space Dust, you know, for the Star Wars deck builder. Like, you know, how many space-themed drinks are there? What I know. can we do? You gotta go like some blue milk. A little Star Wars blue milk. Oh, gross. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Right. Keep that at Disney. Okay. Okay. No. <laughs> I got something that is so special, so exciting. It came out recently, and I cannot wait to open it. And I'm going to unbox it with us. Are we ready? I don't yes. know if your enthusiasm's real or if, like, you're gonna... <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, we're gonna give it a try. I'm excited, too, for a second. It is the oh. Whistle Pig Summerstock Pit Viper Edition. Wow. I'm so excited. So, I saw this. Obviously, it was sent to me because they know that I'm such a exciting guy when it comes to Whistle Pig. I absolutely love it. So That's really cool. I know. Unboxing this. That's, this is so cool. That's the box it comes in? This is the box. So that's here, ridiculous. So, let's start out with the uh, Pit Vipers, shall we? What is that? Soap? Shades? Yeah, the Pit <laughs> Viper Shades. So you know all about the Pit Vipers, right? I do. It's what all the kids wear these days. Oh, do they're, they? They're like supposed to look kind of like, um, you know, extreme sports gear, you know, like snowboarding okay. glasses, but for like the Zennials, Millennials, takes me back to the 80s. Look Looks at these. Looks a little like Macho Man. Savage. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> This is awesome. It comes with all these other cool things. That's, I don't even know. There's oh, there's like the older glasses? Yeah. Okay. And then the pièce de résistance. Oh. Since we're talking French. The Whistle Pig Pit Viper. Now, summer stock. That's pretty cool. What is the deal with why do they have these glasses? They're promoting all this. It's because Whistle Pig is now 100% solar powered. Oh, uh, okay. That's right? cool. I like and that. And that's cool because obviously if there were any whiskey company that was going to do that in the U.S., you'd think it would be the one that's from Vermont, right? Exactly, yeah. It makes total it's sense. Like sort of like Ben and Jerry's or Yep, you? exactly. So anyway, I'm excited about this. I'm excited for... Th- oh, man. Oh, you broke it. Broke the bottle. This unboxing is already not going well. If he didn't have those glasses on, he probably would have opened it no problem. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I was blinded by these lights. <laughs> I know. Having a YouTube channel is going his head. He looks like a movie star. <laughs> there it is. Get out of here. All right. Oh, my gosh. Look at it. Look at you that. See? It's so shiny Ooh. and shimmery. Ooh. Summer stock. So I'm excited about this because it is a mixture of your favorite and my favorite, weeded and rye. Interesting. So they each made them. They toasted the barrels, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. They made this wonderful, beautiful marriage together. And that's what we're going to be sampling and drinking. Okay. So they call this a process, shot. this new process that mm-hmm. they've come up with, the Solara. Right? Solar, right? Oh, Shades, 100%. I'm such a fanboy of Whistle Pig. I can't Well, because there's the Solara process. Solara, but this is Solara. Solara. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Not to be confused. Very true. Gotcha. Oh, that smells like berries and honey. I'm so excited. So I'm going to do it in these glasses now. I do this whiskey and wisdom every year, and some friends got me these glasses that say whiskey and wisdom. I'm so excited. Some nice guys. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right. Oh, 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 oh. So th- th- this is pretty cool because I didn't know Whistle Pig even made a weeded whiskey. I always associate them with Canadian rye. Um, mm-hmm. But this this is cool. This is really cool. Oh, my gosh. The nose on that is so exciting. Wow. Now, I don't... Oh, yeah, he's on the front. Can you see the little piggy on the bottle? Little piggy. Rocking the shades. Little piggy. 
Oh my gosh. Mm. Oh yeah, it does smell great. Yep. Mm. Mm. So also proceeds from this bottle. Another reason why I like it. I like it when I can get behind a cause. Mm -hmm. Proceeds from this bottle go to uh, I think it's Everyday Solar, which is a company that specifically gives free solar panels to non for profits. Oh, very. So cool. it, it all comes back around, right? <laughs> so, anyways, sure. cheers, cheers, some space space and some whistle pig summer stock. I can taste the sunlight. Oh wow, that is radiant. That is. It does feel like it's, uh, I don't know, something about it's uplifting. It's it is. Like it's definitely a summer whiskey. Effervescent. Well, that's one of the things that they said about this is they felt like it was a very drinkable whiskey. It is. And I'm going, drinkable whiskey? Like, oh, it has to be no proof, right? But that's not true at all. No. Nope. It says FP SPF 2000. That's, <laughs> that's really funny on the bottle. i um, trying to see... With these shades, it makes it hard. 43% alcohol, though, so I mean, it's okay. not uh, its not like they're right at 40 or anything. Very cool. This this is tasty. I know. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, you can definitely get the rye there, and then you get that little, like, little prickly wheat on the back end. I like the marriage. Yeah. A lot of caramel, like you would expect. Caramel. Mmm. I might just keep these glasses on this whole time. To me, it almost tastes a little... Uh, Definitely get some fruit and almost like a marshmallow taste to it. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Sweetness there. Mmm. That, that's a good one. That's a really good one. <sighs> I know. The Pit Viper Summer Stock. I'm impressed. I like the label. I like the free Pit Vipers. Now I feel like I'm trendy. I can go <laughs> out in public and look okay. Yeah. I'm going to wear these next time we go to a game convention. Sure. I'm going to break these out. Everyone's going to know. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be like, oh, look at this guy. He, must, he, he watches poker on TV. <laughs> so th this is this is just interesting, though, too. Um, the two whiskeys that we had tonight are so, so different. So a lot of times when, when people find out that I like whiskey and they want to start talking about it, I, I hear a lot, all whiskey tastes the same. If you were in a room and we put this one and this one next to each other and we said, try these two. I don't care who you are. Those are severely different. So different. Yeah. And I know which one's my favorite, but I won't say. I won't hurt your feelings. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. I mean, because <laughs> they, bo they both have their place. They definitely do. Like, if I feel like I want to just have, like, a glass and be classy and wear a smoking jacket and sit in a fancy chair, I'll drink this one. If I want to be hanging out at the pool... Um, or grilling in the backyard or something. That's this guy. I have to say, though, um, I, uh, like I said, such a fanboy for Whistle Pig, but this doesn't have the traditional Whistle Pig flavor profile. I think it's because the the wheat. I think it's the wheat. I think it is the wheat, but I pick it up slightly right on the finish. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm surprised by that. Um, I, I still love it, but it's, uh, you know, it's different than I expected. But again, it is good so summery, so wonderful, so lovable. Oh my gosh, that's that's dangerous. I'm getting that off the table real quick. Tonight, yeah. uh, I think something it's... tells me that bottle may be very well polished off <laughs> with our game group. Yeah, that, that, that one should be a hit. Oh, um, most of our guys, you put a bo uh, under 100 proof bottle uh, with a game and it's going to get attacked. <clears throat> So where are we going to put these here, Dan, in our wonderful list, uh, you know, that we've so carefully cultivated? Um, let's start with Orléans and the Lucky Seven. Well, let's, let's, let's say right now that I think these are two rock star picks. Woo! Like, these aren't like, ah, you know, it's good. People get the theme. Like, you should try these. These are good these. pairings. These are good pairings. You yeah. should try these. And... Get some pit vipers for the whole group, right? <laughs> so everyone, could you imagine everybody sitting around tonight wearing these? We oh, would feel like would we're cool. in Tron. It would be amazing. I might take those home. <laughs> You're always trying to steal my stuff, man. Don't stop getting cool stuff. Get, give me the coffee <laughs> mug back. Art Nova, I want it. <laughs> get them. All right, so Orléans and a lucky seven, the Frenchman, the Frenchman. Um, so if I'm going to put this somewhere, I am thinking exactly right below Tyrants, right above Arc Nova Bear Fight. I totally agree. Orléans has made it. 
on to our top ten list. That's oh. exciting. I know. Now we've got Mike enough. Off. <laughs> now we've got enough to have a top ten list. That's exciting. All right, and then let's do space space and the summer stock. The summer stock with the Solara. Ooh, that's a good one too. Pit Viper edition. Um, I enjoy space space so much. Ooh, it's hard for me because, like I said in one of the last episodes about Memoir 44, for some mm-hmm. reason, that has become such a memory for me. Yep. It's a good good gaming memory. Oh, it's so hard to put anything ahead of it. Yep. Um, so I'm going to have to say Space Base falls just below that, in my okay. opinion. Above it's Tyrants. Above Tyrants, below okay. Memoir. I can see that. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, I... I I didn't. I wasn't sure if it was going to go above or below Tyrants. That's where I was comparing it to was Tyrants as well. So um, if you think it's above, I, I'm the I'm Pit worried. Vipers do it. Yeah, it makes it just the Pit Vipers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a level up episode. So, it was. I mean, I can see where you're coming from. It was. Ooh, Ooh Smoky Scotches are something special. So oh, they're so good. You think but it, goes, it, it can go either way. It can go either way for me. I'm going to let you make I'm a call. I'm sticking with my decision. Go for Space it. Space Base and Whistle Pig, Pit Viper, Summer Stock Edition. I think that that is amazing. We I got, cannot we got wait. a heck of a game night. I cannot wait to play this, this game awesome. night. All right. Dan, hit us off. All right. Everybody game hard. Drink responsibly. See you guys. Don't bang the table. Ah.